What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Shadowlands video. I hope you're all doing very well. Grab your coffees. We are talking today about crafting in Dragonflight. The upcoming crafting changes in Dragonflight. And um, Blizzard did a huge post about this. Um, it, it's over here. We're going to get to this in a second. Uh, I'm going to go through the entire article here because there's so much to go over. There's so many interesting things coming in Dragonflight. I think we should probably be excited about it. Um, I think that, I mean, there's a lot of naysayers, of course, always when these kinds of systems come through. But this looks really promising. Let me just say from the outset, I've read this a bunch of times now and I have a bunch of notes that I've written down. And this looks really promising to me. It looks interesting. It looks like you're going to be able to take crafting from the beginning of the expansion into the end of the expansion and have to have it be relevant throughout the entire expansion. And for me personally, when it comes to crafting, it's something that I've avoided because it, it just becomes irrelevant and it becomes irrelevant very, very quickly. And that's been always my biggest gripe about crafting in the in, in this game is that I don't understand why I even need to be doing it because there's other ways to get gear. For example, I'm just on my death knight right now and I picked up blacksmithing, okay? So you can look at the beginning of this expansion. I came into this expansion with item level 120. I played into the late game of BFA. I raided in Nihilotha, okay? I had like fairly end game gear on my characters coming into this expansion, coming into Shadowlands. My average item level was like 120, okay? The crafted stuff in Shadowlands is item level 100, 99, 109, 129. Like, where you have to get up to, like, to crafting level basically 50 before you start really surpassing the gear that I was wearing in the previous expansion. Now, this is literally... Item level 151 is the is the furthest you can get in blacksmithing for Shadowlands. And, and I think that there, there's additional stuff that you can maybe do in in the later patches and stuff, right? I don't know anything about crafting in Shadowlands, but I'm sure you can make this better in the later patches, right? If I went to a, a different zone, maybe I'm wrong. Somebody let me know if I'm wrong about that. But just if you just think about this from a crafting point of view... I, I'm it, it, you can you are all you're gonna out level this stuff right away with other content that you're doing if you're doing flat mythic zeros coming into drag uh, to Shadowlands you would already be out leveling the gear that you could craft so that to me is one of the major problems with crafting in its current state is that it gets out leveled by other content in the game okay it becomes irrelevant very very quickly number two to be a crafter you have to go farm all this all these mats lace dry ore shadow ghast ingot elithium ore luminous flux the flux you just have to buy i understand that but you have to go and like farm all this stuff in order to be able to craft the stuff that you want to craft that is another problem with crafting in the current state is that you have to go do all this farming in in dragonflight they're going to change that okay that's number two Number three, the relevance of crafting going into the later parts of the expansion in terms of the kinds of items that you can craft that are actually interesting um, also becomes basically irrelevant. And they fixed that to a degree in Shadowlands because they let you craft the legendary items, the, the legendary base pieces, right? Those were made by crafters in Shadowlands. That was really cool. And I think like that was the first step that Blizzard was taking into creating a system that we now see that we're now going to see in Dragonflight. So they they laid some of the foundational stones in Shadowlands for what's coming in Dragonflight. So let's get to this Dragonflight preview here. Let me just move my notes over here. Let's get to the Dragonflight preview and I really want to just uh, dive right in. I am going to read a lot of this, but not all of it, because there's so many important details to understand um, in terms of actually just just reading what's here. So let's let's dive in. Let me just say, um, uh, I talked about the problems. Let's get into the first thing, which is the crafting order. So let me just read from the top here. With Dragonflight development in full swing, we will soon get a chance to try out. Uh, you will soon get a chance to try out 
the new and updated professions in World of Warcraft. This system has been designed to provide greater depth and engagement, allowing you, the crafters of Azeroth, to differentiate yourself and stand out from your peers. There are three main pillars to the revamp system. Crafting orders. Profession specializations, like a talent tree, yes. Number three, crafting and gathering with quality. They are adding quality into the game. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's start with crafting orders, okay? This crafting orders are if you are a person in the game who wants a piece of gear made for you. There is a new UI where you can post a piece of gear that you want to be made for you. And you have to have some of the mats... Well, you have to have all the mats ready to go for the crafter. So you are not the crafter yourself. You're the recipient of the craft. You are going to send out a work order to a crafter. And you're going to have all the mats ready to go for that person. And they will make the item for you. And then they send it back to you in the mail and you get your item. Does that make sense? <clears throat> when placing an order, there are three options you will have so who can fulfill it. Available to anyone, guild members only, or a specific individual. Tradable reagents can be provided to uh, by you to the crafter, while certain special reagents may only be provided by one or the other. In particular, soulbound reagents will often uh, need to be provided by you when placing the order for a soulbound item. So, soulbound items would be like gear. Non-soulbound items would be like uh, stacking like potions, stuff like that. Like consumables right those aren't soul bound so here's an example spurred war boots of the dragon this is what you are providing to the crafter you have to provide the seared alloy uh the tie tyrevite ore and the primal convergent i'm assuming that would be the soul bound thing there's optional reagents which we'll get into later you're going to send all this stuff you kind of post this you create this order down here and then a crafter will go in and they'll have blacksmithing level whatever, a uh, 200, and they make the item for you with the mats that you provided, and then they send it to you in the mail. That's how it works, okay? This accomplishes a lot of really cool things, okay? So first of all, it allows production crafters, so people who just want to do production, they just want to do blacksmithing, leatherworking, um, they just want to do jewel crafting, I think, right? Those are the production ones? Something else, anyway. They can just do that and not also have to go and gather mats. Like I just said, I showed you in the example in Shadowlands. If I want to be a blacksmith in Shadowlands, really I'm going to have to go farm all these mats myself. So I also have to be a miner. I have to go and mine the ore. And then I can craft the, the, the stuff that I want to craft. In Dragonflight, you don't have to do that. You can just be a production person. You can just get uh, orders from other people who are the uh, gatherers. They gather the materials. They give you the order. You make the, the gear. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. Because it means you can just specialize in making gear and not have to also spend time farming mats. Okay? The optional reagents here... Oh, sorry guys, that was for Twitch. The optional reagents here are talking about, like, adding secondary stats similar to missives. I'll get to that in a minute. You'll also be able to customize the order by including optional reagents. Wow, look at that. Look at that uh, segue. Including optional reagents, depending on the recipe, dictating exactly what you want to be crafting. For example, many equipment recipes will allow you to specify secondary stats similar to missives. So um, they get to that in a second. Once you're finished customizing your order, you will decide on an offered commission to the crafter, pay a small posting fee, and send it off. So... Um, the, this, you can see it up here, the commission, that's just, you can write a little note to them and then you can offer a commission. So I don't know, this is going to be just player driven. So the players are going to be able to figure out what the economy is like, right? Like I, we're going to be able to determine how much value we think it is in making a, a, a low quality. This is a low quality item here. This is like tier one, very beginning of the game. So 200 gold. Seems fine to me. I don't know, right? We're going to have to figure that out. That'll be interesting for us to figure out. But it's going to be player-driven, like 100%. Crafting um, can then... Uh, the crafters can then view these orders, fill any missing reagents that they have to do on their end. Some of the crafters will have specific reagents that they have to fill on their end. They'll collect their commission and they'll make your item, right? And they'll send it off to you in the mail. Um, this is a great way for crafters to earn gold, increase your skill, and more importantly, help you craft for your friends and your guildmates. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, profession specialization. So, 
This is brand new to the game. This is literally a talent tree that you are going to get for a specific um, section of crafting. Let's get to let's get into this. Professional specialisms will allow you to specialize in your primary crafting and gathering professions and gathering. Once you've reached a high enough skill, you will earn specialization points through a variety of activities. You get to spend them to permanently improve uh, different areas of your profession. One of the main ways you can differentiate yourself from your peers is to specialize. So we don't know a ton about this yet, but what we do know is that you can specialize very specifically into certain things. So if, let's say you're a blacksmith, okay? You can specialize in blacksmithing into making plate helms or plate chest pieces or weapons, um, big like two-handed weapons or something. There will be ways for you to specialize in a tree that's going to go down and, and you'll have to pick what that is. Now, why would you want to specialize? Well, you are basically going to you're going to be required to specialize into certain types of gear in order to make the absolute best like mythic raid quality gear. Yes, you can make mythic raid quality gear by crafting, but it's going to require you to specialize in that. So if I'm specialized into making helms, I'll be able to make mythic raid level uh, helms, but I will not be able to make mythic raid level uh, chest pieces or boots or pants, yada, yada. I don't know exactly how it's going to come down, but that's the basic idea, okay? And gatherers as well. So if you're a, a herbalist, there'll be a herbalist talent tree for you to go down, and you can pick different things. It's probably something to do with speed and yada, yada. I don't know. We're going to have to see. Here's the next session. Crafting with quality. This is a brand new thing they're adding to the game. Quality. Here's the basic TLDR on quality. Quality increases eye level. For gear. If you're crafting with gear, quality increases eye level. So it'd be like plus uh, 2, plus 4, plus 6, plus 8, plus 10 eye levels. If you craft something and it ends up being quality tier 5, you're going to add 10 eye levels to that item. That's basically what you're doing, okay? Um, um, while many other crafted and gathered items such as potions and ores will have three levels of quality. So you can have five levels of quality for gear, three levels of quality for what looks to be potions and ores. I don't entirely know what that means, but you can see here that they give you an example. For example, a piece of crafted gear might have an item level 270, 272, 274, 277, and 280. So again, that's like bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and like um, you know, legendary, whatever you want to say. In all cases, the goal is to have quality matter enough for it to be worth your effort to achieve higher qualities without having the gains be so large that the lowest quality versions don't feel worthwhile. So this is going to matter like later in the game when you're min-maxing, right? So you get a 270 item level piece of gear because your quality roll like sucked. But then somebody else might have a 280 quality level gear that you don't have right now. You can actually, later in the expansion, you will be able to, like, recraft your item that you have and try to make it better. And I'll, I'll show you that later. For crafted items such as consumables to have quality, the effects of the quality are a bit more varied. So it's not just item level for, like, uh, the consumables. For most, a higher quality will result in a more powerful effect. So instead of healing for... 50% of your maximum health, it'll heal you for 60%, okay? It might come in the form um, of, uh, but, uh, but in some cases, it might come in the forms of variations, such as longer duration, more charges, etc. So it might be that um, the potion that you made now lasts longer, heals you, um, maybe the buff that you're getting for the potion will last longer. So for example, this potion of frozen focus if you get a quality buff on it, you can see the quality bar right here. We've got kind of bronze to silver. So if you get up to this silver thing, then maybe the potion of frozen focus suddenly lasts five seconds longer instead of whatever its base duration is. That's what you're that's what we're talking about in terms of the quality affecting consumables. Something like longer duration, more charges, yada yada yada. Okay. Um it will also be cheaper to craft lower quality versions of these items for a variety of reasons. Like you might not want, you might not care about getting a 
giga juiced potion of frozen focus like you don't care right you just want to buy a bunch of them at a low a cheaper amount so you can craft the bronze versions of them instead of crafting like the gold tier 5 versions okay so you can do that as well for reagents that have quality the quality value will serve as a major input into crafting crafting with higher quality basic reagents will directly provide bonus skill when crafting with them so what that means is you can increase your actual like blacksmithing skill if you only have like blacksmithing level 10 if you craft something with higher quality you you can get higher quality skill just from crafting it so you make something that is a requires level 10 blacksmithing it's a it's a pair of pants you make those pants but they're a high quality for whatever reason okay instead of just gaining one skill point after crafting it you might gain two or three you'll get more okay that's the idea there finishing reagents here's a new thing into in the game as well <clears throat> this is new okay finishing reagents basically help you boost your crafting ability in order to help with the crafting process so it can help you kind of cheat a higher quality craft without actually having the skill to make that higher quality craft okay so you can see here this bar is like bronze to silver if i use a one of these brood salts, I can increase the likelihood that I will make something at a higher quality without actually being able to make it at a higher quality. So here's what it says. Finishing reagents are a new type of reagent that can be used to improve the aspects of the crafting process, increasing your skill <coughs> or crafting stats. Excuse me. <coughs> higher quality versions will have stronger effects on crafting, of course. So Here's what it is. Increases your inspiration by 9 and your crafting speed by 15%. Inspiration is a new stat. It basically says you have a chance to be inspired crafting this recipe with extra skill. So it means if, for example, you used a finishing crafting reagent down here. You can see there's two slots for it. You can increase your inspiration, which is a stat up here. It's a new crafting stat. We'll get to that in a second. What that means is you can uh, have a higher chance. You have a chance essentially of high rolling this item and making it higher quality than it would have been otherwise. So you don't have to use inspiration crafting. I want to make this very clear. The crafting process is not entirely like RNG based. There is a way there is a way for you to guarantee higher quality on an item. There is. But if you want to like fish around with these brood salts and just hope to fish around and get like an rng proc you can do that as well so um important to know the crafting system is not entirely rng based but you can add some rng to make uh, give yourself a higher chance of crafting better stuff uh lastly please note that all not all gathered reagents will have quality the core reagents gathered by the primary gathering professions of mining skinning and herbalism will have quality as well as reagents crafted by the primary professions cloth bolts metal alloys etc okay if you're talking about like fishing uh the meat and cooking stuff uh this does not have quality here we go so determining quality the crafting process when crafting an item there are two main elements to note the recipe difficulty will determine how hard it is to craft the item <clears throat> recipe difficulty will also change when you include optional reagents which can modify it up or down depending on the effects and quality so if you're adding this missive which is guaranteeing critical strike and haste this is a this has plus 15 recipe difficulty this only has plus 10 recipe difficulty okay it has crafting quality numbers down here i'm not entirely sure how it come, some of this stuff is going to kind of work out but your crafting skill is determined on your base skill of your profession, but it can be modified by a variety of factors, including the quality of the reagents you use, finishing reagents, profession gear, various bonuses provided by consumables, most significantly your profession specialization, okay, as we talked about earlier. So the image below kind of helps to figure that out. So here's the difficulty of the item that this person wants to craft. It's 325 difficulty. The crafting skill that this person has is only 292, so it's lower than the difficulty. It doesn't mean that you can't make it, though. You can still give it a shot. It just means that you might not make it at the quality that you're looking for. However, given all the bonuses that this person has accrued over their career in crafting, it is showing you 
that the quality that you will craft on this item is guaranteed to be at least a four or a five. That's what this bar indicates here. You understand that? So this person hasn't even used any finishing reagents to like get, add additional buffs, but you're going to have a base crafting ability. And then you're going to have all these sort of extra things that you can tag along that will help to buff up your crafting ability so that you can guarantee that you craft something at a higher quality. Okay. Does that make sense? That's kind of how this whole system is going to work. <clears throat> As you craft your item, there's a small amount of randomness added to your skill roll to represent natural variation in your crafting execution. In addition, if you have any inspiration, yeah, you can have a chance to become inspired, gaining a significant amount of bonus skill during the craft. This means you may do better than expected, but never worse. In the end, your final crafting skill will be compared uh, against the recipe difficulty, as we showed up here. If that skill is higher than the difficulty, you will craft it at a maximum quality. Otherwise, the quality will depend on where your skill falls comparatively. So... If your crafting skill here was higher than the difficulty, you're guaranteed to craft it at the highest quality possible. However, this is lower, as we said, but you're still almost guaranteed to craft. You looks like you have a 60% chance here to get a gold, like a tier 5 rating. And if you fail, you'll still get a tier 4 quality rating. So it's not, it's not that bad, right? Here's the additional crafting stats that are coming into the game. This is really cool. In addition to your primary crafting skill, there are several secondary crafting stats that can affect the crafting of new Dragon Isles recipes. This is so cool. We're getting new stats in the game. Brand new stats. Not combat related, but they're still cool. Inspiration, as we said, gives you a chance to craft the item with extra skill, which is going to improve the item. Inspiration is those for who, who love rolling the dice and getting lucky, right? It's also a way to craft items at a higher quality than your natural skill will allow you to. So you're kind of hoping to get lucky there. Resourcefulness. You have a percentage chance to uh, use fewer tradable reagents, such as ore. If you're trying to squeeze every drop of profit out of your crafts, this is a stat for you. Multicraft. You have a percentage chance to craft additional items. Only works for stackable items like potions and flasks. Okay. We've long loved the feeling of crafting extra items from various abilities like Potion Master and the Burning Crusade. Multicraft cements this as a permanent crafting stat for those of you who love the moment to craft a bit extra. Crafting speed. Crafting speed is faster. For those of you who want to mass produce crafts for the auction house or just want to save a few sections. So all these stats are really, really cool. And I'm guessing that when you get to the specialization tree for your crafting um, profession, this a lot of these kinds of stats are going to show up there. That's my guess. Okay. That's probably what's going to be happening there. Blizzard's quality philosophy. I'm just going to summarize it for you here. Basically, what they say here is that their philosophy is the lower, the lower item level crafts at the beginning of the game will be very easy to make. And you're going to make them with lower quality, just like we kind of do right now in Shadowlands. However, as you scale into the later part of the expansion, only the best, most specialized crafters will be able to make the highest quality mythic raid level gear. That's what they're saying. Let me just um, pull out a snippet here. What this means in practice is that if you wanted to craft the most difficult recipes at max quality, for example, a chest piece with an item level equivalent to that of mythic raids, yes, this will be possible, you would likely need to fully specialize in the crafting of that type of gear. So you'd have to specialize in, chat in crafting chest pieces. Use all the top quality reagents, both required and optional, all of which would require extremely skilled gatherers and crafters as well. Use the best profession gear you can find, which would also likely require highly specialized crafters to make. They did say earlier that you can get profession gear, and I don't really understand what that means. We don't haven't heard any more about that, but it looks like it sounds like you're going to be able to equip one piece of, I think, profession gear, which will like radically buff your ability to craft whatever you're crafting. And they're saying if you want to make the most high-end mythic level stuff, you're going to have to have this profession gear, okay? On top of that, you would either need to get lucky with inspiration or find valuable finishing reagents that boost your skill level like above the difficulty of the craft, right? So that you can guarantee the top quality. In other words, it will take the contribution of many skilled crafters and gatherers, as well as some luck or extra resources to make those uh, item, best items at the highest quality. So they're saying that you can achieve this mythic 
item level crafting ability, but it's going to require a lot, like a lot. You can't just basically craft an entire set of mythic eye level gear. That's just not going to be possible. So I wouldn't worry about that. But this means crafting will be relevant moving into the later parts of the expansion. This is the relevance piece I said at the beginning that I was worried about. This is what's plagued crafting for so long. It becomes irrelevant once you get to like mythic um you know mythic plus tens in mythic plus or mythic rating even heroic rating makes crafting almost irrelevant right so this is going to help cement crafting into the future of the expansion we also hope that this means crafting the very highest quality items turns out to be very lucrative because you can sell them right in crafting orders while also being something that a very large guild could, could coordinate to do on their own Please note that the goal is not to have high-end gear cost anything remotely approaching the costs of top legendaries in Shadowlands. This is very important. So they're going to make this at least more accessible than current legendaries are in Shadowlands. Shadowlands legendaries have fallen in price more recently because nobody cares anymore. Everybody's got their legendaries. But early on in Shadowlands, it was very prohibitive to be able to get the legendary you wanted because it was in the crafter's hands and the prices were through the roof. So they're saying here... The goal here is not to have high-end gear cost anything remotely approaching the top cost of Legendaries and Shadowlands. That's good. Really, really good news for us. In general, we don't expect the base reagents to be nearly as expensive, and most of the effort to become highly specialized will be through play, not spending gold. The more you craft, the more you can specialize in your specialization tree. Even if for a time only a few players can make the best items at highest quality, getting an item crafted at lower quality will be much more achievable, right? So that this is what they're saying too, is that like you can have a mythic level, let's say the mythic level gear item level is like 300, okay? You can craft something at at um, 300. If you if you get if you get the highest tier possible on your craft, boom, you just crafted an item level 300 piece of gear. What they're also saying here, though, is that <clears throat> getting an item crafted at lower quality will still be much more achievable. And lower quality only means you're losing 10 eye levels. So you can still have somebody craft you a mythic eye level piece of gear at like item level 290, right? Like it's not going to be that much different. If you want to min max and get the mythic raid level 300 piece of gear, fair enough, go do that. But you can still make the lower quality stuff and it will still be very, very good. It's not useless. Lower quality items will also only be slightly less powerful. Sorry, I should have just read that. In contrast to the tiers of legendaries and challenges, right? The tiers of legendaries are like... 25 eye levels higher, 30 eye levels higher. Like, it's, like, way, way different, right? They're not going to be the same in Dragonflight. Finally, you'll be able to get lower quality equipment recrafted to higher quality later by a more skilled crafter for minimal reagents. So basically what they're saying there is that early in the expansion, you have somebody craft you a two-handed weapon that you really want. It's item level 220. And then a month or two goes by, and a patch drops and all the item level stuff is going up, your axe suddenly is becoming obsolete, you go back to a crafter, and they gather, you, you know, both of you gather whatever resources you need, and you can recraft that axe at item level 250 now, or 240, whatever it's going to be. You bring it up to snuff with the rest of the items as we are progressing through the patch, okay? <clears throat> profession skilling philosophy. Basically, they're saying here, you won't need to max out your skill in order to earn in order to learn all the recipes you only need to skill up about halfway to learn them all so right now in shadowlands you have to as you skill up you can earn the recipes right they're saying here if the maximum skill is 200 blacksmithing can go to 200 you only have to get to 100 in order to be able to learn all the recipes in dragonflight all of them you can learn them all so you can go get to item level or uh, skill level 100 and then learn them all, start getting into your talent tree probably, <clears throat> start working on stuff. And you can you can take work orders for items that are higher than, like, there's not going to be any items that are required to be higher than that, right? So bumping your skill up will provide additional bonuses for you in other ways. A few Dragonflight specific crafting deals. We're almost at the end here. There's a couple really cool things at the end here. So here we go. I'm going to read this whole thing because this is really important here. In Dragonflight, you will find many recipes for extremely powerful craftable equipment. In fact, every primary crafting profession can craft one or more pieces, all of which 
uh, work under a shared system with the following attributes. So what this, I actually didn't understand this sentence at first, but. They basically spread it out so that like all the different crafters will have relevant gear that they can produce. That's what they're saying. Blacksmithing, leather working, jewel crafting. They can all make stuff that you're going to want to get, which is great. That means that we're going to want all the different professions. Up to five of these crafted pieces can be equipped at once with two-handed weapons counting as two. Five pieces of crafted gear and you can make weapons. Like you can make end level, like end of expansion weapons, like mythic eye level rated weapons. You can make, and you can equip five pieces of crafted gear. Right now in Shadowlands, in, since WAD, right, we've only been able to, to equip one piece of crafted gear one and that's been good actually but like you can now equip five that's insane that's so cool this means that like crafting is a legitimate way to gear your character it is a legitimate path to gearing your character in all forms of content literally everything so you can become a crafter and then go do your mythic plus let's say and maybe you'll find a, a few other pieces of gear from Mythic Plus, and those are great. You can upgrade those with Valor. But throughout the expansion, you can just continuously upgrade your crafted pieces of gear, and you're relevant for the entire expansion. That is so cool. That makes crafting so incredibly enticing now. Five pieces of gear. That's a lot. That's like, how many pieces of gear do we even have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So we have sixteen pieces of gear, including weapons and trinkets and stuff, right? So, 5 out of 16, to be able to craft that many is a very good ratio, guys. That might sound like it's not very much, but it is. It's actually a very, very good number. So, obviously, the, the, the I don't think Blizzard wants you to necessarily be able to craft every piece of gear. Like, it's, it's nice to still have gear in other parts of content, but they're just saying, they're basically saying here, like, if you want this to be a legitimate way that you gear your character, at least partially, you can do that. And with crafting, you can go find the pieces of gear that you want. You can fill in the holes in your character. If you're missing a weapon that you really want, you can go and farm the reagents that you need as a non-crafter. I want my Pock Storm sword that I don't have on my rogue because it takes forever to drop. I do have it now, but whatever. I want my Pock Storm. I go and I farm all the mats that are required. I send off the crafting order to a blacksmith. They make me the sword. Boom. I filled that piece of gear that I needed to fill that I don't have anymore. That is really cool. That is really, really cool. This is going to make gearing so much easier, so much more intuitive, and so much more about the players. The player agency in gearing will be way through the roof. It's going to be so much better than the current crafting system right now. This is insane. This sentence right here is insane. This makes the whole system incredible. All of the items that you craft start at an item level range near to normal raids, increasing with quality. Through earned optional reagents, they can be brought up to heroic and even mythic raid item levels, making them competitive with some of the best gear you can find. All are soulbound, so you'll either need to craft them yourself or have someone craft them for you through a crafting order. So again, even though it's soulbound, the crafter can make me the item and then mail it to me, and it's it's mine. It's not theirs. It's mine. It's soulbound to me. Each piece of crafted equipment will require several types of soulbound reagents that you'll need to earn to craft it and improve it further with optional reagents. One type of reagent, so optional reagents are really important for like the higher end gear. One type of, of reagent, of optional reagent, will come from various challenging activities including M+, raids, PvP, and adventuring in some dangerous outdoor areas. You will need to earn a fair amount of this reagent to craft a piece of equipment and more for significant pieces. You can also use the, uh, this reagent to construct an optional reagent uh, to bring this equipment up to around heroic item level. So again, they're basically saying like there's these reagents that you can go farm, as I just said, and you could make that axe at item level 200, and then you can go and you can farm this optional reagent and to uh, and then send it off to a crafter, send off your axe with the optional reagent and say, please bring this item level up to item level 220, and you can just keep doing that for the whole expansion. A second type of optional reagent will come from a series of quests that award you enough to craft one piece of equipment. So if you're a crafter, I think you have to be a crafter to get this, you'll get quests that send you out to get all these reagents and you can make that first piece of gear that you want to make, whatever you want to make. 
Additional stages of this quest, these quests, will become available to everyone every few weeks. So they're giving you a guaranteed way to get these optional reagents that are very powerful to make your gear or to upgrade your gear, okay? So they're basically saying like, yes, the primary way that you're going to go get this gear is to go farm the mats and send off work orders or to get work orders yourself and to make the gear. But we have these quests that are going to continue to unlock every few weeks that will also be giving you optional reagents. So if you don't have time to play all the time, if, you're, if you can't sit on this game 24-7, you can come back every week or every couple of weeks and get the, the do the same quest that you just did last time and go get the mats that you're looking for. Really, really good system there. To upgrade this equipment to around Mythic uh, Raid item level, you will need to acquire a final reagent that can only be obtained in the highest tiers of content. Mythic Raids, the highest levels of Mythic Plus, and highly rated PvP. So they are saying that if you want to upgrade your equipment to that mythic raid level item, you'll need to go do some of that really difficult content. And that's fair. I think that's fair. I mean, the people who are going to get, who aren't going to be crafters have to go and do mythic raids and, and high mythic plus and high PVP in order to get their items. It's the same thing, right? So um, they're basically just saying like, this is a fourth way to gear your character. <clears throat> Philo uh, philosophically, the goal of the system is to have professions be a meaningful source of high-end gear elevating the importance and value of the professions. As a crafter, you will need to go to significant effort to gain skill, specialization, and recipes needed uh, necessary to craft this gear, but it should all be worth it. As a user of the gear, you will also need to go out and acquire many of the reagents yourself. Again, you can go farm them. The Soulbound reagents are designed to provide a means of deterministic, incremental progress towards gear of your choice while doing activities of your choice. So basically, this is really cool. This is really, really cool. Here's what this means. I want a piece of gear. I want that axe that I've been talking about. I know that I can't make it myself, so I'm going to go farm the mats out in the open world. That's my, it's like I'm doing a Mythic Plus dungeon to get a piece of gear, right? I'm doing a Mythic Plus dungeon and I'm hoping at the end of the dungeon in the chest is my axe. But instead of, of hoping for the random chance of getting my axe, I have a deterministic way of doing that now. I go out into the open world, I put on some chill music, and I just run around farming the materials that I need to make this axe. And there's a, it, 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 it's a deterministic incremental progress that I get to make towards the gear of my choice. That is so cool. It's another way to gear your character. And it's like totally chill. You don't have to get into a group of Mythic Plus people. You don't have to get into a raid group. It's solo content. You just run out, get all the mats that you need, put them into a work order, offer the commission, whatever it is, and you got your item. Like that is so cool. It's another way to gear your character. In addition, the quest acquired reagents mentioned above will limit how quickly you can acquire high-end crafted gear. This will prevent it from overwhelming other sources of gear while giving you the freedom to choose from where and how quickly you want to acquire. So this is really cool too. I mean, they don't want basically this new crafting system to overshadow all the other gearing systems that they already have. Mythic Plus, Raid, PvP. You don't want to introduce a new crafting system like this and just blow all the other systems out of the water. Like, it's just clearly superior to stop playing all the rest of the game and just do crafting stuff. Like, they don't want to do that, right? So, very, very good stuff. Here's the last piece here. Alchemy. <clears throat> Alchemy and files in the Dragon Isles. Files. Hmm. You will find many strange and wondrous concoctions to discover during your alchemical experimentations on Dragon Isles. One of these is the standardization of the file as the innovative replacement for the flask. There are no more flasks. We're moving to files now. I don't know why, but they, they just don't worry, don't worry with the name. Files work very similarly to flasks, lasting through death and counting as both a battle and a guardian elixir. The main difference is they tend to require about half the reagents to craft, and they last half as long. But, you can, but two can be drunk together to get the duration of a flask for extra flexibility. So you might say, like, Zuko, that doesn't make any sense. Why, why would they do that? They're going to explain. The reason this flexibility is beneficial is that a wide variety of files can be discovered, each with their own unique uses. The experienced adventurer may even find that they want to switch files from battle to battle, like raid boss to raid boss. Hence the added flexibility of a shorter duration. Just a few of the many options can be seen below. Numbers uh, very much not final. So, 
This is really interesting. First of all, here's the cool effects here. File of tepid versatility increases your versatility by 72. File of static empowerment. Remaining stationary will increase your intellect by 240 over 5 seconds. Movement consumes the effect, granting up to 500 speed for 5 seconds. Imagine this on like a warlock. Warlocks have pretty bad mobility, right? Think about that. That'd be really good. File of charged isolation. Your intellect is increased by 225 while you are at least 10 yards from allies. So that's interesting. It means you're like, you're taking a risk with this one because... You're like far away from maybe the AOE heals from like a druid or a resto shaman in a raid, right? So <clears throat> here's why this is really, really good. The files cost half the amount, but they also last, la uh, last half the duration. That, that change in itself is really, really good for a bunch of reasons. Number one, flasks right now last an hour. Files are only going to last 30 minutes as long as they keep the timing the same. When I go do a Mythic Plus dungeon, I have to use a flask if I want to be performing, like, really well. That hour buff gets wasted because I do the dungeon and it takes me maybe 30 or 32 minutes to do my dungeon, let's say. And then I get out of the dungeon and I run around for a minute. I Maybe I get a new conduit I want to put in. Maybe I want to go and, like, farm a couple, like, um, nodes. Not me, but let's say I did. Then I got to, like, form up another group for another Mythic Plus and then by the time I get to my next Mythic Plus dungeon to do it again, I've wasted like 15 minutes of my flask. So now, instead of it being, um, instead of it having 30 minutes left, I've only got like 12, 13, 14 minutes left of my flask. And I'm like, you know what? I need to just drink another one. I'm just going to drink another one because if I'm going to do this next dungeon, I'm going to need it for the full 30 minutes of this dungeon. So I think that that in particular... <clears throat> is a really great change that the file, this new file is going to be 30 minutes long. Same with raid bosses. The typical raid boss encounter doesn't last that long. It might only be um, eight minutes or so, maybe six to eight minutes. And maybe if you have to pull the boss three, four, five times, that ends up being 30, 40 minutes of time spent on a boss. But you can use your one file. Let's say you're doing a fight like Holondris, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to, you're like a, a, a warlock on Holondris. You use your tepid versatility <clears throat> for that fight because it requires a lot of movement. Or maybe you can actually stand still and use this file of static empowerment, which is really, really cool. Maybe you're moving, maybe you're really far away from everybody and you can use this intellect thing instead. Either way, these different files will offer different opportunities for you to do. Like, use this file of static empowerment on your Warlock, on Holandris. You're burning the boss down. Then he starts to do his movement. He starts to move to the next zone. And you start moving, and you get a burst of 500 speed so that you can get in front of the boss before he starts knocking everybody back. You know what I'm saying? There's different uses for these different files, and literally in between every single raid boss, you could be using a different file, depending on what they do. That is really cool. The flexibility of the old flask system, this is now way more flexible than the old flask system, which was literally just main stat or stamina, basically. This is really good stuff here. The 30 minute duration is good for dungeons in particular, but also raid boss to raid boss. You don't feel like you're wasting an entire flask. Like if you had to, if you had to hold these buffs for an hour, you'd feel like you'd need to use it for an hour. That flexibility is really good. Note that because of the wide variety of files you may want to consider, you will not find a cauldron recipe for files in the Dragon Isles, but you will find one for the most powerful craftable potions. So looks like they're going to make a cauldron for potions. So you can like dish out a bunch of potions to your group, but there is not going to be a cauldron for files, which is interesting. Like there's no more flask cauldron. So more onus is being put on the players to, to personally go get whatever file they want to get, which is very interesting. Finally, you may be wondering what about alchemists and file duration. Don't worry, alchemists who choose to specialize in files can discover the secret to making files last significantly longer. So again, that's all about the talent tree that's coming for um, for the crafting stuff. This is just the start of what we have planned for Professions and Dragonflight. So that's it. I know this was really long, guys, but obviously skip around to whatever parts you wanted to see. There is so much here that I think is really incredible and really good for the game. Like crafting orders are going to be incredible. Whether you're a crafter yourself, you can just make orders that other people are sending you and you don't have to go out and farm the mats yourself. Or if you're a casual player who doesn't want to go and do a whole crafting profession, 
you can just go to the outdoor zones and farm all the mats that you need and send them to a profession, send them to a blacksmith, and they will make the item for you. And then later on, you can go back to that blacksmith and give them the mats that they need to upgrade it to a heroic item level piece, and they can do that too. And you can keep the gear that you got at the very beginning of the, of the expansion and just, just keep it all the way through. That's going to increase the value of all of the items in the game. Let's say you find an item in Season 1 that you really like, but you have to ditch it later in Season 2 because the eye level's so low. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. You could literally get it crafted, and, and then just, like, you can get that item crafted for you at the low eye level and keep upgrading it further on, okay? That stuff is really, really cool. Profession specializations, we're going to have talent trees for these things, which is really cool. So if you think about it, going into Dragonplay, we're going to have our regular talent trees for our player power we're gonna have a dragon riding talent tree and then we're gonna have a crafting talent tree as well for the specialization so that's it. there's like actually a lot of extra stuff going on in dragon flight that i wasn't really thinking about before but there's a lot of extra little things that you can do um, but the specializations are going to be amazing obviously as we just saw at the very end of the article you can specialize into files to make them last longer you could probably specialize into a particular kind of file maybe like intellect files or strength files or agility files like who knows like that could be really interesting on top of that of course there's a new quality system coming that's not going to completely break the game you're going to be able to upgrade your item like 10 item levels if you want to that's basically all we're talking about there. So it's not going to completely break the game. You will be able to make items at mythic item level quality, which is really, really insane and is going to make it so that crafting is relevant throughout the expansion. It's going to continue to stay relevant. And I think that that is just exactly what the game needs. This is exactly what the game needs. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below this is a huge video i understand that i want this to start a really big conversation about what you think about crafting in dragonflight i think it's going to be amazing obviously i'm generally pretty positive about these things but honestly if you just look at the nuts and bolts of like what's going on here there's basically very very little rng in this system at all you can basically guarantee quality if you want to there's all kinds of items that you can make that you're going to want to make. You can just make items more easily than you've ever been able to make them. You can continue to upgrade your items throughout the expansion to make them relevant for the entire expansion. Like so many good things about this system. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Drop a like if you like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to support me in the future of what I'm doing here, Patreon is the best way to do that. And there's a link down below. Thank you guys once again. I love you all. I'll see you in the next one.